Africa's vibrant and dynamic youth, esteemed participants, it is an absolute pleasure to join such a great group of women and men who are passionate about creating a more equal and fair world. You are putting a premium on women taking center stage on important matters at the heart of our humanity. Thank you, Nala Feminist Collective, for fostering, enabling, and mobilizing for change. This is precisely the type of action needed to combat the multiple crises that our world faces today. Dear Aya Shebi, I'd like to thank you for your strength, your courage, and your confidence. I am very proud of you. And I would like to encourage you actually to stay rooted in your convictions and commitments. Never hesitate to reach out for support. And I, for one, will always be available for you in these daring strides. Today, we speak of gender equality as an accepted truth. In the Sustainable Development Goals, we have a compact to attain gender equality across all aspects of our lives. And in the Leave No One Behind agenda, we have new impetus to ensure that women are not only included, but that they are in the driver's seat where it matters most. For us at the United Nations, with our feminist-in-chief leader, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, and of course, our proudly female deputy-in-chief, Madam Amina Mohammed, we have attained gender parity at the senior level in this organization. At the UN Development Program, where the UNDP Administrator, Mr. Hakim Steiner, has prioritized an engendered development workforce and a development agenda, our pact is clear. All our programming must drive economic and social empowerment for women. Progress can already be felt, but we are far from where we want to be and where we ought to be. The COVID-19 pandemic has set back important development gains. It has unleashed what UN Women has described as a gender-based violence pandemic. Women have been strongly impacted by the war in Ukraine, and many are having to turn to negative coping mechanisms that we thought we had overcome. In the meantime, the climate emergency continues to hold women in its shadow. Extreme weather, such as droughts, floods, they all force women to work more to secure household livelihoods, but also to face displacement, tending to families in complex settings while leaving their assets behind. All of these crises show us that to empower women sustainably, we need systemic solutions grounded in legal regimes, nurtured as smart development policy, and focused on facilitating enablers like financing to ensure that women's ventures can thrive. Let me get into each one of these briefly. First, we must situate the gender equality cause in its rights context, and that is as a human rights protection matter. Second, we have to invest in gender equality as smart development acceleration policy. When we give women full equal access to education, to health care, to political decision making, when women and girls take their rightful and equal place at the table, when we give women access to participate fully in the economy, we not only lift the entire nation up, we do it faster. When women work, they invest 90% of their income back into their families, compared with 35% for men. Gender equality is also good for business. Companies with three or more women in senior management positions score higher in all dimensions of organizational performance. These are facts. Third, we must make financing available for women so that their ventures can thrive. UNDP worked with UN Women and the Secretariat of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area to conduct national consultations on women in trade in 26 countries throughout 2021. The resounding feedback was clear. 
If women do not get access to affordable financing, the FCFTO opportunity will bypass them. And yet, they are the engine of trade in Africa. Sectors in which women are most active, like agriculture, textiles, tourism, professional services, and informal cross-border trade require urgent prioritization. Finally, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of securing space for women, for more women at levels of decision-making, but in, also in legislative processes, in boardrooms and in other engagements, we need inclusive feminist leadership. Let me close off by saying that today I am Nala because I believe in the bold generation of young African women who are set to transform this alien world for good. It is time for women in Africa to beat their own drum. The days of dancing to the beats that are perpetuating gender inequality are gone. So let's do this.